It says Jesus is greater. He is the mediator of a better covenant. A better set of promises. A mediator of a better covenant. A covenant, by the way, is a contract. And if God makes a contract with human beings, it means that uh, promises are made, and if both sides uphold the agreement, then the contract is enforced. But if either side breaks the promises that are made, if any side drops their obligations, then the, then the covenant is broken. It is, it is, uh, it is ceased to be active. Now, we don't have to worry about God in, in a covenant. We don't have to worry about God upholding His part. It's the human side that failed. Uh, but look at verse 7. We're going to see that. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for a second. Remember a moment ago we said that Jesus is the mediator of this better covenant. But that first one, Jesus was not there. It was a covenant between God and the nation of Israel. And he says if that first covenant had been faultless, in other words, if it would have been uh, satisfactory or suitable, he wouldn't have been seeking for another covenant. Verse 8, But finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come... This is a quotation now from Jeremiah. God is speaking directly through the prophet Jeremiah. He says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Let me just stop there for a moment. What does new mean? Just consider it. Think about it. What's that? Not before. Not before. It's right. Not the same as before. Uh, if I go to uh, the store and go to buy laundry detergent and, it, and I find one that says new, it always says and improved. <laughs> right? Doesn't it? New and improved. That means what they're trying to tell you is it's not the same as the old one. Now probably it is the same. <laughs> with laundry detergent. But that's just marketing. But what they mean is, what they're meaning to say is, it's something different. In other words, they wouldn't put new on it if it was the same old thing in the package, right? They want you to think, in other words, that it's something different. It's got, see, unless it's different, unless it's improved, unless it's uh, some improvement over the former, then there's no point in saying new, right? And so he says, if there had been nothing wrong in that old arrangement, then, then he wouldn't have said through Jeremiah, I will make a new covenant. But now he says, Behold, the days come when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 9 says, Not according to the covenant. <clears throat> that means not based on or not determined by. According to means as determined by. Not as determined by or not like the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not like that one. Not the same old thing. And I want to emphasize that because I think, I don't mean people sitting in this room necessarily, but I think in general in the Christian world, I think most people think that it's all the same thing. I think they think it's just like an, an add-on, an addendum, uh, just connecting uh, just more of the same. Sort of like, you know, uh, when they make a sequel to a movie. Uh, have you ever seen a sequel? And like they'll, they'll have one movie and then if it's successful, they'll make a sequel. Uh, like I remember, and I always use this as an example, I could think of some other ones, but this one's very vivid to me. When, when my wife and I were, before we were married, we were dating when we were in high school, they came out with this movie called Rocky. Now I shouldn't tell you that because now you can figure out kind of more or less how old I am, but uh, this movie, do you all remember that movie Rocky? It was pretty good, wasn't it? It's Sylvester Stallone and, you know, and he's running up the steps of that building, da 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 you know, he's doing all that stuff. And it was good, it was exciting, you know, and it had a great plot and it was really... Uh, it was really, and it was successful. It made a lot of money. You know how people in Hollywood are. If something is successful and it makes a lot of money, they get their heads together and say, hey, we need more of this. And so they made Rocky II. And when Rocky II came out, I said, hey, I remember Rocky I. That was good. Let's go see Rocky II. And you know what? It was just the same old thing with some new characters. Well, see, I think what a lot of people think the New Covenant is just the same old thing with some new characters. Just the same premises, the same rules, the same setup, but with Jesus thrown in. But see, what he's saying here is it's not the same. It's completely new. It's completely different. If it were not, he wouldn't be calling it new. And then to make it plain here in verse 9, in this quote from Jeremiah, not according, not determined by, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers and the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Now, he said, I made a covenant with them in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Who's that? The nation of Israel. Uh, he, he said, I made a covenant with them. God on one hand, and on the other side of the covenant was the nation of Israel. 
So we've got a perfect God on one side of this contract and a fallible, failable set of human beings. And let's not blame them. If it had been us, we wouldn't have done any better. It may be done worse. It just people just know different than us. But see, here's the point. When a perfect God makes a contract with fallible human beings, if there's a failure, it's not going to be on God's part. And there was a failure. It was on the human part. And it says here, listen to what it says. Because they continued not. It doesn't say I. It says they. Because they continued not in my covenant, I regarded them not, saith the Lord. What that means is because they failed to uphold their part of the covenant, then uh, He was required to disregard them. In other words, they broke their part, so I was required, God is saying, by the terms of the covenant, uh, to, to uh, cease to regard them as covenant partners. Now that, that means it's necessary for a new covenant. Now what's the fault with that old covenant? Now some person might say, well, let me have a shot at it. No, that's not the point. See, if it were possible, listen, if it were possible for any human being to live up to it, then God wouldn't have needed to send Jesus to make a new covenant. God could have just said, well, listen, folks, those first ones failed, but you try a little harder. But it's not possible for human beings like us. We needed a mediator. And Jesus came as the mediator of a better covenant. That means He's the representative, the human representative. The New Covenant, and this is important for us to understand, the New Covenant is not a contract. It's not an agreement made between God and us as individuals. Because if it were, we would fail just like they failed. And it would be broken just like it was broken with them. Because we're just as fallible as they are. But the perfect nature of the New Covenant rests in the fact that God did not make a covenant with you and me, but with Jesus as our representative. We are the beneficiaries of this new covenant, not because we live up to any covenant uh, obligations, but because Jesus as our representative lives up to the covenant obligations. And Jesus made it very plain that He Himself established and initiated and inaugurated this new covenant. Now if you'll, I, I'm not going to say hold your finger there, but just hold in your mind this what we're just reading. And turn briefly back to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, and I'll just look up here on the screen and let them get it for me. Matthew 26, 26, just for a moment. I want to show you that Jesus is the one who initiated this new covenant. This is at the Last Supper. We read this when we're taking communion. I want to read it now and not think about in terms of, we're not going to take communion right now, but I want to read it and just think about what's actually being said rather than as a preparation to participate in something. Think about what Jesus is saying in this. As they were eating, this is right before the crucifixion, just hours before He's going to shed His blood for us on the cross. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is My body. Okay, next one. And He took the cup and He gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. For Listen, this is My blood of the New Testament. Or you could say New Covenant. Other translations have it. Either way. This is My blood of the New Covenant or the New Testament. Shed for many for the remission of sins. Now notice, He said, This is My blood. He doesn't say, Now everybody gather around and let me cut you with a little knife and you're going to shed your blood and then you'll be in the covenant. He doesn't say that. He doesn't ask us to shed our blood. He says, this is my blood of the new covenant. What does he mean by that? I, Jesus, am establishing this covenant with God. I, Jesus, as your representative. Now, what's our part? Well, just a moment ago in the previous verse, he said, take this cup and drink all of it. He, it's my blood. Now, listen, what was in the cup was not his blood. It represented, though, his blood. Now, this is important. He did the work. He made the covenant. The covenant is between him and God. That's makes it perfect because He's a perfect human representative. Our part is to simply receive. Could you guys back up to the previous verse? Verse 27. He took the cup and He gave thanks and He gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. See, what's in the cup? The cup is what He did. The cup is contains His blood initiating the new covenant. And then He hands it to the disciples and metaphorically or spiritually to us. And all that we are to do as recipients of the benefits of the New Covenant is to take it, receive it, accept it. Because we take it, because we receive it, because we accept it, it makes us participants through the Mediator, through Jesus. Does this make sense? He is the Mediator. He is the one who mediates between us and God. He shed His blood to establish this covenant. 